spinal schwannomas. This is a case of a 40 plus year old gentleman with history of pain and electric shock sensation in his back, buttock and lower extremities which was worse at nights. This was together with weakness of both legs and also chronic constipation who after several visits to the emergency room eventually had an MRI scan of lumbar spine with the following finding. MRI scan of his lumbar spine showed an intraspinal, essentially intradural extramedullary tumor with cauda equina pushed dorsally. By the way, cauda equina is a bundle of nerve roots which is at the end of the spinal cord and the meaning of the cauda equina in Latin is that of a horse's tail. This is due to resemblance of this bundle of nerve roots coming from the cornice or the end of the spinal cord to horse's tail. He was taken to the operating room for surgical resection of this tumor, the view through the surgical microscope. In the operating room, he underwent standard bilateral laminectomies, achieving wide lateral dural exposure. This is with minimal manipulation and delicate preservation of the facet joints to mitigate spinal instability or deformity in the future. Nerve roots can be seen through the nicely exposed translucent dura, but not the tumor which is covered by the nerve roots. Intraoperative ultrasound is a helpful adjunct for localizing the exact position of the tumor. It was used to examine the adequacy of the dural exposure before the dura was opened. The dura was opened sharply at the midline. Effort is made to preserve the arachnoid. However, as you can see, not entirely successful every time. This is to prevent bulging of the nerve roots into the surgical field. Retraction tack-up sutures were used to mobilize the dura laterally, thus increasing the surgical exposure and reducing the possibility of epidural venous hemorrhage. You can see that the bundle of roots of the lumbar and sacral spinal nerves, otherwise known as cauda equina, were under considerable pressure by the tumor. They were completely covering the tumor capsule. Extramedullary tumors located around the cauda equina can pose a significant surgical challenge due to their often adherence and at times engulfing the nerve roots. Overlying arachnoid band is incised and opened carefully and nerve roots were carefully dissected and mobilized away from the posterior capsule of the tumor. Intraoperative neurophysiological parameters such as motor evoked potentials, somatosensory evoked potentials, and free running EMG of the major sensory and motor pathways are carefully monitored during this step. It is noteworthy that this tumor most likely represents a schwannoma, which almost exclusively arise from the dorsal or sensory nerve rootlets. We will have a brief review at the end of this presentation, but here's a quick review of the anatomy and the pattern of the growth of schwannoma. As mentioned, they typically arise from the dorsal or sensory nerve rootlets and gradually grow. With careful dissection, we may be able to preserve both motor and sensory function of this patient as the tumor typically arises from a single rootlet and that rootlet may be non-functional 
or there may be overlapping or redundant function in the other rootlets, which we need to preserve. Exposed dorsal pole of the tumor is carefully isolated from the adjacent nerve roots by cotinoid patties to prevent heat transfer by low current bipolar. Low current bipolar cautery was used to devascularize a safe portion of the tumor, which was then opened sharply. Ultrasonic aspirator was used to carefully emulsify and remove the central content of the tumor, thereby reducing its volume and make the exposure easier. However, one should avoid excessive decompression and possible violation of the posterior aspect of the capsule and injuring the posteriorly adherent functional nerve roots. The compressed tumor is gently mobilized for careful inspection of the nerves within the afferent bundle which at the onset appeared to be non-dissectable from the capsule. However, diligent microsurgical dissection will prove otherwise. Direct nerve root stimulation is used to evaluate the functionality of each nerve root involved. Arachnoid knife is used to dissect functional nerve roots away from the capsule. As the posterior border of the tumor well defined and functional nerve roots mobilized away from the capsule, thus preventing heat transfer and injury to the nerves, Ultrasonic aspirator is used to decompress the tumor more. After dissecting and mobilizing away all functional nerves, proximal and distal section of the affected nerve are identified and secured. Tumor is separated from the afferent and efferent segment of the nerve and finally removed.
in one piece. The pathology of the tumor was that of a schwannoma as expected, with no evidence of malignancy. Cut-out quina, which was compressed by tumor, is carefully inspected, and arachnoid bands and webs incised to establish free flow of CSF around the roots after dural exposure. The dura is then closed with running sutures in a watertight manner. Postoperative MRI scan showed complete resection of the tumor. Patient was discharged and his symptoms resolved after the operation with no weakness, numbness, or tingling of the lower extremities. His sensation was completely preserved as a result of careful preservation of his sensory rootlets. Let's have a brief review of spinal schwannomas. Schwannomas are the most common type of intraspinal nerve sheath tumors with over 90% propensity, with the other two less commonly types being neurofibroma and malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors. Schwannomas occur at all ages with a peak incidence between the third and the sixth decade and pain typically the most common presenting symptom. These tumors are formed by Schwann cells which form an insulating layer around the nerve roots and peripheral nerves. They typically grow very slowly. Less commonly Schwannomas may be associated with a genetic disorder like neurofibromatosis type 2 or Schwannomatosis. Intraspinal nerve sheath tumors have a relatively equal sex distribution with patients with a mean age of 47 years, ranging anywhere from 5 to 85. They are usually located within the cervical spine, followed by the lumbosacral spine and thoracic spine. Spinal cord schwannomas arise predominantly in association with dorsal sensory nerves, with surgical resection the most appropriate treatment.